Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, very interesting things are happening today in the Middle East, especially that in Israel and in Syria. Uh, we're going to turn our focus first towards Syria here and speak about things that are going on there. An unusual thing happened in Idlib. At least this is alleged to be coming out right now that the Turkish military and the Free Syrian Army, the very group that Turkey has been backing uh, in this battle in Syria, have actually fought out a major battle in Idlib. Well, this all started, according to the Amman News here, uh, when a sniper, a Turkish sniper, actually had targeted a farmer, a Syrian farmer. Well, undoubtedly, they must have targeted a farmer that they happened to love because the Free Syrian Army took uh, actions into their own hands. And contrary to that of U.S. support and Turkish support, they countered an attack against the uh, sniper, which then countered another attack between the Turkish forces. And of course, at the end of the battle on both sides, there were heavy casualties. This is what's coming out thus far. Not really sure yet, you know, how that's going to play out there. Not many people talking about it. A couple of people are talking about it over in Syria, but not very many. So we'll kind of follow that story and see how that plays out. We're watching it live very closely to begin with because, uh, as you know, there is a lot going on. This particular video right here uh, that was put out, uh, actually, this is, let me just share with you who put this one out here. This is uh, uh, Kualat al Madik posted this uh, video here. This is a Russian made um, missile system, and there were quite a few of them. I think it was six of those that were headed on the highway towards Idlib. I want to kind of give you an idea, though, just the type of missile system this is. It shows that the Syrian government, uh, the military there, they are definitely not playing around with the firepower they're putting up there besides their planes. This is that missile system right here. Take a look at it, get an idea just what type missile system is about to go landing in Idlib, Syria. Nothing small, a lot like the Scud missile that, uh, that the Iraqis used back there in the Gulf War there. Uh, it's very powerful Russian-made missile system there. Uh, six of these launcher pads were actually en route to Idlib by the uh, Syrian army. Uh, so they're expecting major resistance. And of course, the Tiger forces are already fighting in the countryside now. Uh, in, in the country there. So it's been a pretty, pretty hefty duty battle going on. I uh, also want to turn your attention to Israel. Major protests going on in Israel. Uh, now Sputnik, I don't know if they're actually talking about just how big uh, this is. It says here, uh, Netanyahu calls national state law of protest a threat to the existence of Israel. I'd have to disagree with the prime minister on that. Uh, you know, the thing is, is that Jewish Israelis, thousands of Jews and Israeli Arabs took to the streets of Tel Aviv Saturday shouting equality and apartheid. And the equality is what I agree with. This is what we do need in the country. And of course, the, the national state law, it does discriminate. It doesn't just discriminate against Arabs. And this is what a lot of people are totally missing the point on. Uh, it discriminates against the Druze, Druze community as well. And the Druze community has been very uh, pro-Israel from the very beginning. But this Jewish state law has majorly harmed the relationships between the Druze and the Israelis. Uh, in fact, Naftali Bennett, as I mentioned before on Israeli News Live, he has backtracked. In 2014, he was very outspoken about the Jewish national uh, law. And, uh, but once the law passed and he saw the effect it was having on the Druze community, he has uh, had regrets as it's been quoted by the media in Israel. I sometimes think it's just political uh, pandering myself by uh, uh, some politicians such as uh, Naftali Bennett. You know, 
is to be able to get the votes when the time comes around for him to run for prime minister, correct? Maybe so, who knows? I know he's very much into the political scene there, and I'm sure he would love to be Prime Minister of Israel. He is the Education Minister at this, uh, this point now. Uh, but as, as I said, in 2014, he was very vocal. There are some 50,000 protesters have taken to the streets there, and many thousands upon thousands are Jewish Israelis as well opposed to the bill. I'm also opposed to the bill uh, because it discriminates also against the house of Israel. Because clearly, biblical prophecy, whether it be Jeremiah, Zechariah, Joel, wherever you look in biblical prophecy, the house of Judah and the house of Israel return to the promised land here in the last days. All right, The house of Judah, as we know from a biblical point, has never embraced uh, Yeshua to be the Mashiach. But the house of Israel, on the other hand, many of them not only have embraced Yeshua or Jesus of Nazareth to be the Mashiach, but still do to this day. And the only way they would ever be able to return under a right of return, which they should have that right, being that they're Israelis, you know, by birth they are the Hebrew children, would be if there was no Jewish state law. Otherwise, the only way they can come is to renounce any belief they have whatsoever in the Messiah. After all, what difference does it make? In my opinion, I mean, you have the Orthodox community in Israel. Many of them, like the Chabad community, be, believe that Shmirsin uh, is actually the Messiah. And, of course, he's passed away. But yet they still hold to the idea that he is the Messiah, the Mashiach of Israel. Uh, I don't expect him to be raising from the dead anytime soon, if you ask me. But nonetheless, uh, the whole principle of the Noahide laws forcing this upon the entire world community is exactly what they're wanting to do. And the Jewish state law is just the first process. And of course, as I said, it will condemn any of the believers that truly want to return. And what's sad is I'm seeing more and more believers in Yeshua willing to renounce their faith in Yeshua just so that they can return to the promised land. That's dangerous. That's worse than playing Russian roulette. Take a stand for Yeshua. Believe me, when the house of Judah recognizes the Messiah, they will have more appreciation for those that stood their ground and stood for truth than those that were wishy-washy and just caved in to any ideology. Very troubling. Anyway, guys, later this week here, I'll be doing another Patreon video over on Israeli News Live on Patreon. We're going to go back and we're going to examine something that Paul said uh, speaking about the, uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness, and high places. We're going to be looking at this in light of the 5G technology. Dave Hodges had a very interesting program just recently where Dave Hodges talked about uh, the 5G technology also will have brain to skull technology in it where they can project thoughts to the human mind. That has really made me want to go back and relook at the biblical prophecy that Paul said. After all, we're dealing with demons. The technology that we have now and the technology as we see clearly in biblical scriptures, both Genesis and in the book of Enoch, came from these fallen angels to begin with. All the technology was being handed down by them. Maybe that's exactly how they do mess with our heads even to this day for the last six millennia. We'll talk about it on Patreon. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching the broadcast. Don't forget to support the broadcast. Uh, we do need your help. I hadn't talked about this in a while, but we do need your help. Uh, there's a lot that we're doing in behind the scenes there. We've been very busy uh, preparing for these conferences, getting ready, also setting up more conferences as well, uh, working on ones in the background we haven't spoken to you about as of yet. Uh, originally, we were planning on going to Texas and North Carolina first. We haven't forgot you. Those of you that are in Texas and North Carolina understand we haven't forgotten you. Uh, we have 
had to kind of adjust the schedule on based on some other issues. I can't go into that here, but we have not forgotten you. We will still put those conferences in Texas and in the North Carolina area as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, IsraeliNewsLive.org is our website. Please donate there online, as well as you can mail your donation uh, in Orlando there. I don't have it up on with the, using the phone technology here. Uh, 8297 Champions Gate Boulevard, uh, excuse me, Champions Gate Way, number 442, Champions Gate, Florida. I think that's 338, and, ah, you know what? I'm not sure of the zip code there, but I'm sure if you look up Champions Gate, you could find that, or just one of the other videos there. Shalom, shalom. Thank you for watching.